How's it going everybody? My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Cheap Wheels. Today what we're going to be doing is changing a universal joint in the four-wheel drive front end of this F-250. Now you get yourself an old four-wheel drive truck like this and it's only good as a four-wheel drive truck if the four-wheel drive works. One of the biggest problems is the front universal joints in these four-wheel drive front ends. They're not doing anything most of the time. They just sit there picking up rocks and salt and dirt and sand. Even if the other components in the four-wheel drive system work on an older truck, a lot of times these front U-joints, they're just shot. Now that the wheel's off and the brake caliper is taken off and out of the way, let's get started by removing this locking hub cover. I'm using a Torx head bit to take these off. Yours may be a little bit different. It might have Allen head screws. And there's the insides. I'm going to use a clean box lined with paper towel to keep my parts organized. Now we're going to get that locking ring out. This ring sets in a groove in the hub. And we'll use one of the screws from the locking hub cap to pull the innards of the locking hub out. Now just behind the locking hub portion, you're going to find an internal snap ring. It goes around the spline of that stub shaft takes a pretty good set of snap ring pliers to get that out. So if you don't have a good set, you may want to pick one up. Behind that snap ring is three washers. Those actually aren't in the diagram I have for this front end, but there they are. When I'm done taking those washers off, I can take off the first of the two lock nuts. That lock nut is supposed to be torqued down tight, but it's only finger tight. That nut is supposed to be torqued down to 160 foot pounds or better. And it's, it has no torque on it at all. Way to go, last guy who did this job. Now that was the outer lock ring. And between the outer lock ring and the inner lock ring, there is this odd hold keyed spacer washer. Now what this does is it indexes into the spindle with the keyway in the top. And it holds that lock ring that's behind it in place while you torque the outer one that we just took off. A little pick like this will help get that out of there. Just like that. Even though the outer lock nut was completely loose, which is completely wrong, the one on the inside, the inner lock nut, it seemed to be about where it's supposed to be. It torqued down to somewhere around 35 pounds. You're supposed to torque it to 50 and back it off a quarter of a turn. And there's that inner lock ring. There's the spindle. Now I'm going to thoroughly clean the spindle before I reinstall it. But while I'm cleaning this area around the spindle mount, I wrapped that spindle in paper towel just to make less of a mess. Now to break that spindle loose, I'm going to put on one of the lock nuts that I've taken off the spindle to get the hub off. And then I'm going to tap on the nut. Always tap on the nut, never the spindle. I'll also put some penetrating oil at the joint between the spindle and the steering knuckle. A few taps should come right out. Inside that spindle is a set of roller bearings, kind of caged needle bearings. Look at how bad that grease is. The seal that goes on the stub shaft is absolutely shot too. Now here is the reason for the season. This is why we did this job in the first place. This U-joint is absolutely trashed. I've seen them worse though. What I'll generally do on a really bad universal joint is just soak it and tap it. By flooding those recesses and tapping, it allows that penetrating oil to work down in there. It also helps to break that rust bond. At that point, we can take a deep well socket and just give it nice sharp taps not hard taps but just good good stinging taps and it'll start to work its way out of there best skill you can have doing a job like this is patience I don't want to hit this thing hard to put too much stress on this yoke I'm just gonna tap it out there we go I'm going to use a small end of a small ball-peen hammer to drive the other side out. You have to be careful doing it this way. You definitely don't want to damage where that snap ring sits in. 
time. Ha ha ha! Yeah! Now we're talking. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to fill that cup full of penetrating fluid. Now I'm just going to tap on it. I'm going to set this guy aside. Just let it soak while I clean up the bores on the other part of the shaft. I'm going to take a pick. We'll go around the, this whole section where that snap ring sits in. Like an automotive dentist here. What good would it be to go through all this work and then not be able to put that lock ring back in? So we're just going to take our time. This is the most fun part of the whole job, really. Now that those ring grooves are cleaned out, I'm going to use this piece of emery cloth to clean out that bore. See, that cap is on its way out. Another thing you could do at this point is you could lock onto that cap and work it right off. If you want to be really careful about your yoke, find a socket that will set down inside that yoke but still rest on the shoulder, this area right here. And then we can just... This job absolutely screams for patience. Now I'm going to go through the same process of cleaning this one up. I'm going to get all the grooves cleaned out. I'm going to clean out the bores. Get it ready for the universal joint. Pry off this grease slinger seal. Came off pretty easy. And uh, you can see this one has uh, seen better days. Now we have the spindle. We've got to pull off that spindle seal. Wow. The grease that is packed in these roller bearings. It's almost like clay. It's so thick. It's no good. I'm going to maybe clean up the inside of these roller bearings, kind of rinse them out so there's not all this old grease in them, and then I will repack them when I put this on. So now we've come to a point where we have all of our parts out, everything has been cleaned, everything's been prepped. We're ready to put some new seals on, and at that point we're ready to do our reassembly. We're going to start out by installing this universal joint. I'm going to put a very light coating of grease inside of this yoke. Pull one of the caps, pull the other cap. We're going to take our universal joint. We're going to put it into the yoke, like so. Install a cap. Make sure all those needle bearings are where they need to be and none of them are coming out. Push that on there. And we'll go to the other side. Same thing on the other side. Put that cap on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze these caps in. That side's in. Same thing with the stub shaft portion. Put just a fuzz of grease on the inside of these bores. We're just going to take our clamp now, and we're going to start pressing. There's one side. There we go. That's ready to go back in the vehicle. One of the hardest parts of this job so far has been buying the seals. Each one of these seals has its own name, and some manufacturers call them by different names. Not only that, in the diagram for the front end, they're just all listed as seals, so you don't know what they're called. Best to take off your old ones, take them to the auto parts store before you buy the new ones. Now the seal that goes in the spindle is a two-part operation. There's actually the seal portion, and then there is this plastic thrust washer portion too. Need to get these bearings good and packed. Not only that, but I'm going to pack that seal. Pack the groove around the rubber portion of the seal. And grease this whole area. That is the thrust washer portion, they call it. We're also going to put some nice fresh grease on that spline of the axle shaft. Now before I go through the trouble of putting all this back in the truck, I just want to make sure that these seals 
come together the way they're supposed to. I think we're good. I'm gonna take this axle shaft and lay it in a chunk of paper bag. So when it passes through the axle housing, it's not picking up a bunch of dirt. As soon as we're on the other side, I'll take that paper bag off. I'll slide that boot back over top. Right there, nice. I'm gonna take some of this grease. I'm gonna grease the inside of this bore where the spindle goes in to the knuckle. That way if this ever needs to get done again in the life of this truck, it will have a lot easier time coming back out. Now that I'm pretty sure everything's good and greasy, I'm gonna glob this shaft really good. We're gonna stick that spindle back on. At this point, we must carefully put on the dust shield. I'm gonna slide that spindle on there. There we go. Now all of these take nuts except the bottom. Why? Well, the bottom is a cobbled together bolt that somebody put in there. I'll put this guy in the bottom. Now all these need to get torqued to 60 foot pounds. I'm gonna start with 20, move up to 40, then move up to 60. Make sure my spindle is nice and clean. We throw that hub back on. Throw some grease on this spindle, especially right where that seal rides. Pack this outer bearing with a bit of fresh grease. I should have just cleaned this bearing completely, but uh, I didn't really want to get that far into the hub. The hub looked pretty decent. Now we're to the point we can put everything back in here. Now when it comes to the inner and outer lock ring, one of these has a pin on it. That's the one that goes on the inside. And that pin lines up in a hole in this washer, and it keeps that washer from turning while this one gets locked down tight on it. So when it comes to these two rings, the one with the pin goes on first, the pin faces out. The diagram in my Chilton's manual shows a thrust washer behind that lock nut, but there was not one there when I took it apart. So I'm just going to put it back together the way it was. Now we're going to set our torque wrench to 50 foot-pounds. That says it's good. We're going to spin this wheel several times. Make sure that grease is distributed where it's going. We're going to try it again. Make sure we got our 50 foot-pounds. Turned a little more. We're gonna keep turning this sucker. Make sure that grease is out of the way and is not interfering with the torque spec. It'll go a little farther. I'm gonna keep trying this for just a couple seconds. That looks good. Once you reach 50 foot-pounds, you're gonna back it off a quarter of a turn. So from right there, at about three o'clock, I'm gonna go back up to about, about noon. Good. Now looking inside, we can see right there is that little pin. That pin is going to hold our center washer. There's a keyway in the top of the spindle. There's a keyway in this washer. Those line up. You can see that that pin is almost lined up with that hole. I just need to take this keyway spacer washer thing off and turn the nut behind it in just maybe a sixteenth of an inch. About a sixteenth of an inch is all. Just a fuzz. Right there is that pin lined up right where it should be. If I back that out and push it back on, you can see that pin right there lines up in a hole. Now this outside nut is supposed to be 160 to 200 foot-pounds torqued. So I'm going to set the torque wrench. This torque wrench goes to 150. I'm going to set it all the way up to the top. We'll put this on and we'll get it as tight as we can. is a difficult thing to torque. Oh. Now from here we're going to reinstall our little shim pack. Now from here what you need to do is get a pry bar or a tire iron back into that steering knuckle and pry that stub shaft out towards the outside of the vehicle. We need it out as far as it's going to go so we can put our snap ring on. Let me get my snap ring ready.
and reinstall the four-wheel drive locking hub. Now time to install that lock ring that makes everything stay put. Just kind of get it started in its groove down here at the bottom. We're just going to use that hub to pull against with our pliers. There we go. Hopefully that'll go back on without having to compress anything. And there you go. That's how you change universal joint in a four-wheel drive front end. The seals cost about 15 bucks. The universal joint costs about 20. I had five bucks into grease, another five bucks into just miscellaneous stuff, paper towel, that sort of thing. So I'm south of $50 on a job that would probably cost you four or 500 bucks at a shop. A job like this is not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of time and it takes a bit of patience. Read up online, read your Chilton's manual. Just make sure you've kind of got your head wrapped around the job before you start it and uh, save yourself a whole bundle of money. My name's Dave Whipple and thanks for watching Cheap Wheels. Keep your junk on the road. See you soon.